Mm -hmm. Good afternoon, everyone. Today, we are very happy to have uh, Tatsuma Nishoka from Yukawa Institute to tell us about uh, topological pseudo entropy. So, Tatsuma, please take it away. Yeah, thank you very much for the introduction. And uh, I'd like to thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity of the talk. So, uh, today I'm going to talk about my recent work, uh, this paper. So, this is in collaboration with Tadashi. Takayanagi and uh, uh, Yusuke Taki. Both of them are in YATP, Kyoto. Okay, so, so today I'm going to talk about uh, some new quantity called shoot entropy. Um, so let me begin with my, uh, the brief introduction. So, so I'd like to uh, consider some entanglement um, entropy. So entanglement entropy is a quantum information measure. So mostly so used in quantum information theorists. But in these days, there are many applications of the uh, entanglement entropy in quantum field theory and also in holographic uh, context. So typically, uh, the entanglement entropy is a measure uh, which counts the, uh, uh, the amount of quantum entanglement in the quantum state. So in quantum field theory, so we typically consider a bipartite system by dividing time slice of QFT into two regions. So region A and region B in this way. So then the entanglement entropy is roughly speaking, uh, counting the number of so-called EPR pair across uh, this boundary. So, uh, so uh, as clear from this figure, so entanglement entropy depends on both uh, the types of series and also uh, the uh, shape of the region. So it is not a local uh, local quantity, like a correlation function of local operators, but uh, it is a non-local observable. So, um, so it is very different from uh, canonical, okay, standard textbook uh, correlation functions. So this is very non-trivial fun uh, function, which depends on the shape. So uh, there are many, uh, many works studying entanglement entropy in quantum theory. And uh, so, it, uh, so there are some um, evidences that uh, entanglement entropy can be a very good order parameter in various phase transitions. So mostly in condensed matter theory. Uh, so there are many papers. So, so if, if there are some so-called quantum phase transition, then entanglement entropy can be uh, I can detect such a phase transition. And also, uh, there are nice applications. Okay, entanglement entropy is known to satisfy very non trivial inequalities. So it, it is called the so called strong subadditivity. So basically, such an inequality follows from the unitarity of, of the theory. But once you apply such inequalities to QFT, then sometimes you, you can get very strong constraint on the dynamics of QFT. So uh, one of the examples are, is a so-called C theorem. So C theorem uh, states that uh, there, are, there exists some function so which counts the number of degrees of freedom in QFT. Um, and uh, actually, so you can construct such a C fun so-called C function. So that's a function. Um, defined on the space of QFT. But uh, to construct such a function, uh, uh, yeah, constructing such a function is very non trivial. And also, proving such a function uh, is monotonic is also very hard. But once you use uh, the uh, inequalities, uh, the entanglement entropy satisfies, then so you can prove such a C theorem. So that's a very non trivial, uh, yeah, very yeah, remarkable application. And also, uh, similar uh, techniques can be used to prove so called ANIC. So, ANIC is the average narrow energy condition. So, this is the energy condition in QFT. And the, such an uh, uh, energy constraint can be also derived from inequalities of this type. And more recently, so there are several um, studies now uh, of entanglement entropy, not, not only in uh, in QFT, but also in QFT with non-local observables, like a 
boundary, yeah, QFT with boundary, uh, and also uh, QFT with, uh, say, so called defect or interfaces. So, so this is uh, the figure for the interface. So in QFT, so you have some, uh, okay, when you consider quantum uh, entanglement entropy, so you consider some region A like this. But sometimes, yeah, you, there exists some interface, yeah, which divides two regions. Yeah, this is the right region and this is left region. So they may be some, they may be a different theory, but they are glued along interface. And uh, if you calculate the entanglement entropy um, across such an interface, then interface, yeah, can be probed by, uh, through the entanglement entropy. And you can do, do the similar game uh, for higher dimensional so-called defect. So these are also the non-local non observables. And there are many studies in these days. But today um, I, I'm, I'm going to consider another um, entanglement measure. So this is a new quantum information measure called should entropy. The should entropy is concerns with a entanglement, quantum entanglement, not in the static system, but in time dependent system. So basically you are interested in some uh, evolution, time evolution of states. So this is the initial state. This is the initial. So you start with state psi, but you let it evolve. And then this is the final state. And so the question is how to, uh, how to quantify the quantum entanglement in such a time dependent system. So this is original motivation to define, to introduce choose entropy. So th this, this was uh, introduced by Tadashi and his collaborators last year. And uh, so since this is a very new, new quantity, so uh, not so much is known so far. So in my talk, so I'd like to um, get some insights about the choose entropy in, in simple, uh, simple uh, examples. So using topological field theory. So my yeah, my goal is to explain yeah how it depends on how how should entropy depends on topological data in to, yeah TFT topological field theory, and also I'm also yeah um, interested in how should entropy is related to another measures like a uh, uh, interface entropy. Okay, so this is my goal, and this is the my uh, the plan of my talk. So I already, already finished the introduction and I'm going to explain how to calculate the pseudo entropy in quantum history using a path integral technique. And then I will apply this technique to Chan Simon theory. And also I, I'm going to uh, explain uh, how pseudo entropy is related to so-called interface entropy in CFT. And finally, um, I will, uh, define some uh, extension of should entropy. It's called left to right should entropy, which is defined in boundary safety. Okay. Okay, so let me let me start with uh, the second part. So also, by the way, so if, if you have any questions, so please ask in time. Okay, so uh, to set the state, so I'd like to begin with the definition of entanglement entropy. So, so basically, uh, so in QFT, so we take a time slice and uh, we bipartite this spatial region into two parts, so region A and region B. And correspondingly, so the Hilbert space is also decomposed into two parts, so HA times HB. So then, so you can define so-called the reduced density matrix by taking a partial trace over the region B. Okay, so this is the reduced density matrix. And then the entanglement entropy is just a von Neumann entropy for this reduced density matrix. And uh, um, in most cases, so we only consider the pure ground state. Okay, so the total space, total uh, density matrix is given in this form. So size, some, yeah, this is the ground state. 
But OK, so this form is kind of um, tricky because it's, there appears log of the density matrix. So, so it's easier. Uh, actually, yeah, it, 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 it's going to be easier to use uh, the generalization of entanglement entropy. So it's called Rennie entropy. But uh, yeah, I will introduce it later. Okay, first, okay, let, let's represent this reduced tension matrix uh, using pass integral. So first, so to construct the ground state, so this one using Euclidean pass integral. Okay, so this is easy. So because, okay, basically so to construct this ground state, so we first consider the inner product between the ground state and some, some state, psi naught. So this psi naught, defines um, some boundary condition at, at some time slice. So basically the ground state can be obtained by, um, by evolving any state from uh, time minus infinity to time, to time equal to zero in Euclidean path integral. So this, this curve is basically the uh, tau equal to minus infinity in Euclidean time, and you let it evolve. Then, so you eventually obtain the ground state. So only the ground state is project, uh, yeah, project projected. So this is a path integral representation, and you you define, okay, you specify a boundary condition at tau equal to zero. So this is the time slice. So this phi not appears here. So this is the path integral representation. And so then, so to calculate, okay, to represent this reduced density matrix in path integral, so okay, we, okay, you need to take a partial trace over, over B. So this is easy. So you, okay, you basically insert so here. So, okay, so the, the, this, this is the uh, original definition of row total. So you have, okay, okay originally, so you, you have this one. But taking uh, all, uh, the trace over B means that uh, you have, you specify some boundary condition, phi naught, and only take a, a path integral over the region B. Okay, so in figure, so okay, you, you glue two copies of this guy, but okay, uh, the conjugate becomes like this. So you glue these two and the path integral over B. So you end up with this figure. So this part, so we did, we haven't specified any boundary condition so far. Okay, so so the, so this these cuts correspond to the index of this resistance matrix. Okay, so now so to calculate the entanglement entropy, so let's use so-called the replica trick. So replica trick means that uh, basically, so you start with the Rennie entropy. So it is a one parameter generalization of the entanglement entropy. So it is defined in this way. And if you take n goes to one limit, then so you end up with the entanglement entropy. So, so this is actually easier to calculate because there is no, no log row here. So you, have, you only have log of trace of row to the n. So this is very easy to calculate. And so, and this part, so I, I, I rewrite this part as Z of, yeah, Z of MN. So this, yeah, this MN means some manifold labeled, yeah, labeled by N. So which I will going to explain. So this, this guy, this is a actually a partial function on the N-fold cover. So N-fold cover means that uh, Okay, if you glue the n copies of a resistance energy matrix, so this is the one copy, and this is second copy, and this is the nth copy, and now you are taking a trace of row to the n, so you need you need to glue the n copies of them. So as I briefly said, so this the upper cut is one of the indices of row a, so you glue this index with uh, the second copy, so the index of the second copy. So this on this should be should be glued together, and you cyclically glue the, these n copies, and you come back. 
So then, so this becomes uh, just some manifold with branch cut. So this this uh, uh, manifold I call MN. Okay, so ZMN means okay, this is just a notation, but this is just a partial function on such a manifold. Okay, is it clear? Okay, so now, okay, let's, let's play the same game for the shoot entropy. So once you uh, understand the previous part, then it's very easy to generalize, generalize to shoot entropy. So we start with the shoot Rennie entropy. The, the shoot Rennie entropy is defined as follows. So here, uh, instead of having row A, so we, we used, we use so-called transition, transition matrix. Okay, so this is the reduced, reduced transition matrix for two states. So basically, shoot entropy depends on two states, which has non-zero non overlap. So tau A with psi and phi is just a, a partial trace of tau psi, sorry, psi and phi. And tau psi phi, so this is a transition matrix defined in this way. Okay, so here, so you have two states. So this one is the initial state and this is a final state. So because, okay, if you consider uh, the expectation value, okay, sorry. So if you consider the expectation value uh, using this transition matrix, then this is nothing but, uh, uh, such a transition amplitude, okay? So this is the initial state and this is the final state. So, so this is a transition matrix from psi to phi and you take a partial trace of this transition matrix to define this guy. And as, as it's clear from this definition, so this, this guy is not the Hermitian in general. So, yeah. So the shoot entropy can be complex number. So this is different from the entanglement entropy. But of course, okay, so by design, so it, this one, this one uh, reduces to the Rennie entropy when psi is equal to phi. So if you take uh, both of them to be equal, then so it reduces to the Rennie entropy. Okay, so now let's uh, consider the passenger representation of this guy. So before that, okay, let's calculate the inner product. So phi and psi in the passenger integral notation. So, so we already, okay, have a passenger representation of the ground state, but here, so we have arbitrary state psi. And uh, okay, let's, uh, let's focus on, on the case that uh, this psi is given by a pass integral um, from the vacuum and inserted and but inserted uh, by some operator of psi. So this of psi corresponds to this state, okay? So, so okay, in CFT, so you can assume that, uh, okay, uh, state operator correspondence, then so you can create such a state by inserting local operator of psi somewhere, okay? So then, so the pass integral representation of this, this uh, psi naught and uh, psi, is given by uh, this path integral. So you insert some operator here. And then uh, the inner product is given by gluing uh, two copies of them, okay? In the lower part, you have psi, some operator of psi. And uh, in the upper part, you have some operator of phi, but with dagger. So this one, uh, I, I like to call the path integral on, on M1 with operator inserted, okay? So you have some operator. But okay, I, I, I say that, okay, this, this is a local operator, but in general, it can be non-local operator as well, okay? Okay, so because this psi can be arbitrary. Okay, so now let's move on to the transition matrix. So the transition matrix 
Okay, so I, I, I define the transition matrix in this way, but uh, it, it's easier to de define this, extract this, this part from the numerator. So, so I, I, I like to introduce unnormal unknown transition matrix, so tau tilde uh, in this way. So then uh, you can easily write down the passenger representation of this guy. So it is mostly similar to the, the case for the entanglement entropy. But now you insert two operators like this. So this is the unnormalized transition matrix. So, so here, so you have still have cut here along region A. And now, so you are going to glue n copies of this guy to make a partial function on the manifold cover. So, so you have uh, n copies of them and you glue them together cyclically. Okay, but now, so you have operator insertions. So is it clear? Uh, yes, yes. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, so that, then the final form of the should any entropies uh, given as follows. So this is the expression so using path integral or partial function. So in here, so in, inside the log, so you have the partial function on the n-fold cover with operator insertions. And in the denominator, so you have partial function on the original manifold say flat space with operator inserted like this. So um, maybe, so the previous derivation um, makes manifest uh, the following property. So basically, so the should entropy or should any entropy is uh, symmetric with respect to the region A and region B. So in, in the previous figure, so I, I draw a cut along region A, but this is a, just a convention. So you can draw your cut along the region B if you like, because yeah, both of them give the same, same manifold cover. So uh, basically the should any entropy is symmetric with respect to A and B. So, okay, so this is the same as entanglement entropy. So, okay, so now, okay, let me apply. Can I yes. just ask some sure. question? Hi, Tatsuma. Sure, sure. Um, so um, basically, um, because mm -hmm. at the beginning you said you were interested in some evolution from phi to psi. Right. Do you mean some like unitary evolution or some, move some on some evolution in some Lorentzian time or, or you all, all of them can, or more like Euclidean evolution? Is this like all the cases are can okay. be treated the same way? I think, yeah, you can treat it, yeah, anything, yeah. I see. Uh, yeah, yeah, like uh, you, you can also yeah, perform LOCC or and also some, some measurement. So yeah, it, it includes most cases. I see. And yeah, the, yeah, yeah. And and the and this thing I wanted to clarify you to clarify. So the phi and psi they don't need to be in the same Hilbert space, or um, that's a good question. Yeah, um, I think I assume that uh, they are in the. Same here with space. At least I assume that they are they have non-zero overlap. Yeah, th that's the yeah necessary condition. Okay. I also have a question. Can you hear yes. me? That's one. Yes. Uh, in the case in which phi and psi are the same, is it mm -hmm. uh, would it be just the entropy of the excited state, uh, psi and phi? Ah. Uh, uh, right. So. Yes, you, you can take uh, psi and phi the same. Then, so, and if, if psi is, has some excitation, then yeah, you, you are calculating some entanglement entropy with excited states, yes. Okay, thanks. Yes. I also have a question, so can you hear me? Sure, sure. So in, in a CFT, suppose mm -hmm. psi and phi, um, so can I think of the denominator as a sort of two point function? And then I'm wondering if, if the, for instance, if I chose phi and psi to be primary, mm -hmm. then they would have to have the same conformal weight, right? Otherwise this thing would blow up. 
depending on right, 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 right. So what are the yeah. additional constraints that are imposed on Psi and Phi? So, okay, so in, in CFT, yeah, you, you have to take uh, the same operators. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, so as to make, yeah, make the overlap non-zero. But, uh, okay, so for example, in CFT, so you can take a linear combination of the operators, for instance. Uh -huh, okay. Like, like a, yeah, like a Cardi states in boundary CFT. Okay, or yeah, yeah more, more in general, so you can yeah consider, okay, so say, for instance, you can take a linear combination of some primaries and then, uh, okay, so I already use C, so maybe this is better. So they, they would have some overlap. Okay. Yeah. But so the, the overlap is then constrained by the symmetries of the theory, right? So mm -hmm. say if it had also, or it had a U1 symmetry instead of CFT, then I would have to see that the charges sum up to mm -hmm. zero, say. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, good. yeah. Thanks, thanks, right. that right. clarifies it. Yes, yeah, thank you. Any question? Okay. Um, let me move on to the, uh, the second part. Okay, oh, sorry, my third part. Okay, so now, so let me apply uh, my previous uh, calculation to Chern Simon theory uh, as an example. So okay, I'm gonna consider the 3D Chern Simon theory uh, with gauge group SUN and level K. So this is the action. So this is since this is topological. So the only observable is just the Wilson loop. So Wilson loop uh, uh, along some contour. So Chan Simon theory is very nice because uh, we can calculate the partition functions uh, very concretely. So you and they are given by so-called the modular H-S matrix. So uh, uh, basically, uh, so in Chan Simon theory, so okay, so you may wonder that okay, wh why so this partial function is finite, but uh, okay, so the I assume that there is okay, some regularization, UV regularization. So namely, so you you first consider partial function on S2 times S1. And so this must be one because on S2, so uh, there is only one, one state. Okay, this is a Hamiltonian picture. And on S2, so uh, the, the dimension of the Hilbert space is one. So, so that's why the partial function on S2 times S1 should be one. So this is a kind of normalization. And then, so once you fix this, then using some modular property, you can construct three sphere uh, by gluing a uh, two solid torus and using the uh, modular S matrix. So then uh, the three sphere partial function is given by S not not. And if you insert the Wilson loop in representation Ri, then so this is, this is, this i is a the some representation. So then this is given by S zero i. So this is the result by Witten. And uh, okay, but it, it may, sometimes you you have uh, more than one Wilson loops. So like this, so to calculate the partial function of this type, so you can use. Uh, some formula, the composition formula. Uh, okay, namely, so th this formula says that, uh, okay, if you have some manifold, three manifold, then first you cut, cut it into two pieces. Then, so you, but okay, so then you have some boundary in the middle, but, uh, but uh, you should uh, cover this boundary by a half hemisphere, okay, three hemisphere sphere like this. And then uh, such a relation holds, okay? <laughs> so more precisely, I, I should write Z here. So this is a relation between the partial functions, okay? So this is a kind of a rule to calculate the partial functions in chern simon theory. So for, for example, the, the partial function with two Wilson loops on three sphere can be calculated uh, as follows. So in the denominator, you have three sphere partial function. And in the numerator, so you have three sphere partial function with one Wilson loop, okay, Ri, and also another partial function with Wilson loop. 
And in and but we already know that the three sphere partial function is s not not, and uh, with reason loop you have s not i, so you end up with this this one. So this is very easy, and you can also calculate the partial function with any reason loops if you like. Okay, now I'm gonna use uh, this kind of technique. Okay, but uh, okay, before that, okay, we have to specify so what kind of uh, states uh, we consider. Okay, so here, so I, I want to consider uh, four, four quasi particle excitations at some time slice. So here, so I have, uh, I take some region A and B as in this way. And uh, now I assume that there are four quasi particle excitations. And the two of them must be inside, uh, inside region A. But uh, okay, uh, I, I, now I have two fundamental excitations and uh, two anti-fundamental excitations, J bar. So then there are two cases. So one is that well, the case one is that uh, so fundamental and anti-fundamental excitations are inside A. And the case, in case B, and uh, two, two fundamental excitations are inside A. So, so I these two cases did by Wilson loop. Okay, so basically, so this is the uh, intersection. This is the intersection of the Wilson loop at some at some time slice. So, so you have to consider how to connect these excitation excitations. Okay. Okay. Let, let's let's start with the case one. So in case one, okay. So. Okay, I should explain the relation between this figure and the previous one. Okay, so th this is, okay, now we are working in three dimension. So this is uh, just R2. But now I compactify R2 by adding uh, point infinity, then it becomes two sphere. Okay, so th th this, uh, the, this is the ball, three dimensional ball whose boundary is two sphere. Okay, this is S2, surface is S2. And this orange curve corresponds to the previous orange curve. So the left, uh, okay, this, this is, uh, okay, how can I say? The, this, this may be called left hemisphere. The left hemisphere is a region A, and the right hemisphere is a region B. So we have two fundamental excitations, oh, sorry, one fundamental and one unfundamental excitation in the region A. So then, so we can connect these two excitations by using Wilson loop. So this Wilson loop is inside inside a ball. Okay, they end on the, the on the surface of this ball. So, so I, I can connect these two by using Wilson line. But uh, there, there is another uh, way to connect J and J bar. So, so this is a, another way, okay? So you can connect this fundamental representation to, uh, to the anti-fundamental excitation in the region B. So let, let's, let's take uh, these two states and consider their uh, transfer matrix. So then, okay, first I consider the un unnormalized transfer matrix. So basically, so to, to calculate this guy, so you, you glue, okay, you, you take a partial trace over region B, okay? So then, so, so you basically glue these, th these two parts together. So you, you glue these two, So then, so you end up with this figure. Is it clear? I, I only consider the topology. So, uh, so if, if you think a, a little, then so you 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 go to these two, then so there is only just one line here. But the topological it is equal to this line. Is it, is it clear? 
Okay, the end you left with this one. So the, the resulting transfer matrix is given by this one. So then if you take a trace over the region A, then it means that you you glue the left part, left part and the right part. Then so this this one becomes three sphere. Then you glue these two. So you end up with one Wilson line like this. Uh, it is clear. Sorry, it's it's a bit tricky. So I have a question. Yeah, yeah. So when you glue things together, mm -hmm. you you have two choices of uh, like two ways of gluing, right? When you glue like A with A bar, because you uh -huh. can glue J mm -hmm. with the you can glue the fundamental with the anti-fundamental. Anti-fundamental, yes. And uh, the other way, right? Uh, fundamental yeah, but, but, or is it not allowed no, no 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 yeah j, j and j bar can be glued but the j j cannot be glued to j okay yeah so j should be glued with j bar so there is only one way to glue glue them i see yeah yeah <laughs> sorry yeah it's just a yeah sloppy way to draw this transfer matrix but uh, yeah, if, if you yeah, think uh, carefully then, so this is transfer matrix for the case one. And then, so you end up with the one with some loop. Okay, so this is the inner product. And uh, yeah, this is the three sphere partial function with one with some loop. But now question is, yeah, the, the, the end copies of this guy. Okay, now we are interested in the uh, gluing and end copies of this guy. So now, so you glue and end copies of them and they take a trace. And, but this is easy because so if you glue two copies of them, then you, you get one, one, one loop here. And if you glue the third one, then you get one one uh, Wilson loop and so on. So then, if you glue end copies of them, you end up with end loops. Yeah, this is just a topology. So um, uh, anyway, yeah, you end up with three sphere partial function with end loops in this case. So then now it's easy to calculate this partial function using the decomposition formula. So I skipped all the detail, but so it's because it's just a technical part. But anyway, so you end up with the shoot entropy, so given by uh, this. So in this case, it's kind of boring because this is actually equal to the topological entanglement entropy for for the for the uh, vacuum. So there is no dependence. Uh, there, yeah. So this, in this case, yeah, entropy is given by this just a modularized matrix. And it's also, uh, I think it's real. So ne next, uh, let's move on to the second case. So this is more interesting. Okay, uh, by the way, so let, let me uh, make a one comment. So the reason why we get the kind of trivial uh, result is that uh, because this psi, it, it's kind of, uh, no, yeah, no entanglement states. So I, I mean, okay, in, in this case, Wilson loops, Wilson line connects only excitations inside A and inside B respectively. So there is no no line uh, between A and B. So you, you can you can yeah think this line as a kind of EPR pair. So then, so this, this one has non-trivial entanglement, but this one does not have any entanglement. So there is no entanglement between A and B for these states. And if one of the states, if one of the states uh, has no entanglement, then uh, uh, the pseudo entropy is known to be kind of boring. So namely, it gives this kind of trivial answer like this. So this is why we get such an answer. But uh, now the, the case two is more interesting. 
So now we can take two states like this. So both, both of them has non-trivial entanglement. Okay, so this is an EPR pair. So, so both of them has non-trivial entanglement. And if you play the same calculation, so you just could, yeah, you, first you take a partial trace over the region B. So then you end up with this, this figure. So this is the transition matrix. So you just glue these two lines. And then you get, you get such a diagram. Then, okay, then, okay, actually, so the inner product between psi and phi is actually one Wilson loop. Take n copies of them. So then, so you get the highly non trivial Wilson loop. So, so this is just a one Wilson loop, but it has n crossings. Okay, it is a bit non-trivial. Non okay, <laughs> maybe my figure is not so clear, but okay. So th there's n, uh, there are so n crossings, self-intersection, and such a uh, partial function is a bit tricky to calculate, but there is a kind of nice algorithm by Witten to calculate such a partial function. And we did some calculation and we calculate the partial function for integer n, so n equal one, two, three, four, so not one, but uh, two, three, four, five, da, da, da. And then, so we analytically continue in odd n because we want to analytically continue n to one. So we, we uh, okay, actually, so this partial function highly depends on whether n is even or odd. So we only take the auto part and make analytic, analytic continuation. So this is the final result. Okay, this looks a bit uh, complicated, but the important part is that, so this is not real. Okay, so here, so you have my I, imaginary number. So, okay, actually yeah, this Q is also a, a complex number. So, so this is completely a complex number. So in this case, the shoot entropy becomes complex. And okay, so this is a non-trivial case. Okay, so this is just an example. And let me give, give you one more example. So uh, previously, so we only consider uh, a simple case, like uh, the, we only consider states on three sphere or sorry, two sphere or flat space. But now, so we can put a theory on, on the torus, if you like. So here, so you, you have solid torus. So this is a solid torus. And uh, this is a, uh, the surface of the solid torus. Now, so we insert, okay, we insert Wilson line inside the solid torus and bipartite the, the surface, okay, yeah. surface into two, two regions like this. So this left part is the region A and right part is the region B. And we regard it as a, some state. So this is a state we want to consider. And now, so we choose two states as follows. So now the Psi, it can be expanded like this. Okay, this is a linear combination of Ri with some coefficient Phi I. And similarly for uh, Phi, so this is Psi and this is Phi. So if you take these two uh, states, then the shoot entropy becomes, yeah, given by, uh, by this formula. So it, it is also a complex number. Okay, so this is just an example, but uh, yeah, so it clearly shows that it is a uh, complex number. And also, so yeah, the nice thing in for the John Simon theory is that uh, we can analytically, con yeah, analytically calculate the shoot entropy. And uh, yeah, this is the exact result. Okay, so let, let me move on to this, uh, maybe fourth part. Let me move on to the CFT story. Okay. Okay, now, so let me focus on 2D CFT. So this is a 2D CFT. And now I want to consider uh, the, the single interval region. So this is the region A and, and 
this, uh, this part is the region B. So now, so we are considering the shoot entropy. So, so this is the, uh, actually, yeah, I'm considering the Euclidean time evolution, but the lower part is the state psi and uh, the upper part is the state phi. And now, so we are interested in the shoot entropy for such a uh, setup. But in CFT2, so you have a, a lot of symmetry, so conformal symmetry. So you can use the conformal map. Okay, so originally, so we have just a single interval, but for just a technical purpose, I, I, uh, I just uh, cut, cut out these small holes around, around the boundary of the region A. So this is, this, these two holes play the role of UV cutoffs. But anyway, so you can use the conformal map. Then after the map, so you get a cylinder. So, okay, this part and this part are glued together. So, so okay, after the conformal map, so you, you, you just get the cylinder. So this is a cylinder. And, and then this tau, parameterizes the, uh, the cyclic direction. Okay, in the original figure, so tau parameterizes uh, like this. Okay, so tau is the direction uh, around this, these two holes. This is tau. Okay, so after the map, uh, anyway, so after the map, uh, you end up with just a cylinder. And uh, so, you, and you have, okay, from zero to pi, so you have state phi, and from pi to two pi, uh, you have state psi. And the, these two holes are mapped to these lines. Okay, so if, if you are familiar with uh, the, the interface entropy, then you may uh, think that, okay, shoot entropy looks, uh, very similar to the interface entropy. Okay, so so here, so let me, uh, yeah, comment on the interface entropy. So interface entropy is a very uh, closely related measure to the entanglement entropy. So it, it, this is uh, just entanglement entropy across a conformal interface. So here, so we have, okay, we have some one interval, say, uh, sorry, semi-infinite line. So we, we bipartite our uh, one dimensional space to two parts, right part and left part. And here we have interface, conformal interface, which separates two states, psi and phi, like this. And the interface entropy just measure the entanglement entropy in the presence of such a conformal interface. And, but in, in this case, you can also use conformal map. So if there is conformal, you can use a conformal map. So in this case, so to make a, a replica partial function, uh, you, you basically uh, cyclically glue, okay, you, you first uh, cut out this Riemann surface along with region A and glue and copies of this Riemann surfaces along this direction. So after the map, okay, and this is a tau direction. And after the conformal map, so you end up with uh, just a cylinder again. So this is a cylinder. And, uh, uh, but along the cylinder, so you, you have conformal interface uh, at the boundaries of psi and phi. So if you compare this figure with the uh, similar figure for the shoot entropy, so you may notice that, okay, so because, so this is a cylinder, so these two, boundaries are glued together. So actually, they, they are the same up to the shift of tau by pi half. Okay, if you, if you just shift, if you just shift the tau direction by pi half, okay, if, you, if you shift this figure, then you end up with this figure. Okay, is it clear? Because this is, there's a cylinder. So these two are glued together. So, so here, so the important part is that, uh, okay. Uh, basically the reduced density matrix. So here I'm considering interface entropy. 
So this is the entanglement entropy across conformal intervals. So you have reduced entry matrix, row A with subscript I, but this one can be obtained from, from the transition matrix by just shifting tau by pi, pi half. Okay, so th this tau is not related to this tau, but this is just a parameter, Euclidean time tau. But anyway, so th they, they, have, they are mostly the same. And so if you compare with the, their replica partial functions, so then so you find a nice relation between pseudo entropy and interface entropy in CFT. So this is the uh, uh, yeah the resulting partial function for the pseudo entropy, and this is for interface entropy. So because these two boundaries are glued together, so so they are actually equal. They are the, the same partial function. So you just shift the parameter tau by pi half, then you, you get this one. So what we find is that uh, the shield entropy for uh, an interval region is equal to the interface entropy for half line. So when there is CFD. Okay, so this is the main result. So is it, it is clear? Okay, so okay. I, I actually have a question here. Yes. So for the interface, part we have uh, uh, a kind of interface or defect yes while in the pseudo entropy part mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like which what kind of quantity or what kind of thing plays the role of the interface yeah actually so here so okay the point is that okay here so when we identify these two actually so we are also having the same interface uh, across across these two states. Okay, so here we have conformal interface. So now, okay, I, I assume that, okay, so these two states are separated by some interface. Okay. Okay. okay but then but is, the, it's a, is there, a, I, I think there's a conformal transformation that takes you like hmm? from one interval to a semi-infinite interval. Exactly, exactly, yes, exactly, yeah. So first, yeah, you can yeah, map this space to configuration like this. So there's conformal transformation. So from one interval to half line. And then so you can go to this, this figure again. Okay, okay, I see, thanks. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So the, the difference between pseudo entropy and interface entropy is that okay here in the interface entropy case, the region A is completely inside state psi. Okay. So this is a time slice, and we take a, a re sub region A inside state psi. So in the case of pseudo entropy, sub region is uh, on 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 the boundaries of psi and phi. So so actually yeah yeah if if you if you look yeah look at this figure the final result then it's not so surprising why they are equivalent. But uh, from the beginning it's not so clear so why yeah they should be equal. So the definition looks very different. But uh, thanks to the conformal symmetry, so they turns out to be the same. Mm -hmm. I see, and there's also one thing that yeah is a little bit a little bit confusing because uh, here in the pseudo entropy case, actually the uh, uh, interval mm -hmm. it, it's parallel it's parallel to the to the interface. Yes. While yes. In, yeah. In, yeah. Yeah. In the other case, it's orthogonal. Yeah. Right. Right. So. 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 Yeah. That's why they are different. Yeah. yeah. But uh, it turns out that the day becomes the same. Okay. So that's why I, I, I said it's non-trivial. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Is it, is it related? Because it seems like mm -hmm. one is somehow radio quantization or the other. Is... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let, let, me, let me give you one more relation. Maybe this is easier to understand. Mm -hmm. And okay. So basically, so in the case of pseudo entropy, okay. So previously in CFT2, so I consider a single interval. But now for simplicity, let's consider half line. Yeah, pseudo entropy for half line. And then also, yeah, let's compare it with interface entropy for half line. So, okay, so they, they look different because one of them says should entropy, the region A is along the interface. On the other hand, so in, for the interface entropy, the region A is taken uh, uh, such that it is also going out to the interface. But in the re replica calculation, so we are now using replica trick. So in the replica calculation, so we are going to uh, glue n copies of this Riemann surface with cut along region A. So this is the, this is where we uh, we have a cut. Okay, so region A is where we have cut in replica calculation. But uh, this is a matter of just a kind of convention. So where to have cut. So after yeah after constructing the, the replica manifold, both of them give the same replica manifold. Okay, so here, so we have cut here, but uh, um, yeah, eventually, so yeah, 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 roughly speaking, yeah, you, you can move this cut, yeah, in another places. Yeah. Yeah. So that's I, why. I think I, think I yeah, understand that's why the, now. Yeah. <laughs> it, it looks like, like you rotate the interface to Right, uh, right. Pi over half. Yes. And then when you yes. consider one interval case, mm -hmm. then in, in the replica way, uh, actually the, the, the interface line will shift mm -hmm. by pi over two. Yes. Yeah. You, you can rotate. Yeah. Yeah. There is no, no, yeah. Okay. Actually, so this configuration is not translation invariant. Okay. So, I mean, so there is no U1 symmetry around this, the origin, but uh, okay. The point is that, okay, you, you can move this cut as long as A is inside this region. So after gluing, after constructing replica manifold, then so they give the same, same result. Or yeah, yeah. If you look at this figure, okay, this is a safety example. But okay, you glue these two lines. This is a this is a cylinder. This makes a cylinder. So you can freely shift, you can freely shift a the region by pi half. And the, the, the same is true here. Well, yeah, actually, yeah. Yeah, you can take, you can rotate this sub, yeah, this region A anywhere, at least in this case. So okay, so but okay here, so so in in the previous case, okay, this relation holds only in CFT two. Okay, in the left hand side, I have shoot entropy for one interval. And right hand side, I have an interface entropy for half line. So this holds only in CFT2 because I, I use conformal transformation from, from one interval to a cylinder. So this only, yeah, this can be possible only in CFT2. But uh, this one, this ratio, holds in any any QFT and in in dimension yeah equal or greater than two. I only use rotational symmetry. So yeah this this is yeah more general result. Okay. 
is, is it clear? But I, I'm, I'm not going to give any concrete calculation, but uh, yeah, this, this is a universal relation. So once you use, okay, you can uh, use this relation to calculate shield entropy. So you don't have to calculate the shield entropy from the scratch, but okay, if you know the interface entropy, then you can, you just, yeah, use, use the result for the interface entropy, then you automatically get the shield entropy. So, and in our paper, so we did several cal such a calculation, and we just translate the result for the interface entropy to shoot entropy. So that's a very convenient way to calculate shoot entropy. But we, we haven't used this ratio so far, so maybe it's uh, maybe interesting to use this ratio to calculate shoot entropy in say non-conformal QFT. Okay, so any, any more question? Yeah, I, I'm close to the end. So um, if there are no more questions, okay, let me move on to the last part. So, uh, okay, I skipped all the detail, but okay. So now, so I'd like to Kind of generalize a distributed entropy. Okay, it, actually, I, it's not the generalization, but uh, okay. I before that, let me explain. Uh, let me introduce one more uh, uh, variant of entanglement entropy. It is called left-to-right entanglement entropy. So LRE. So in boundary CFT, so in two dimension, so left-to-right entanglement entropy can be defined as follows. So basically, so we have, okay, in boundary CFT, so we have a boundary state, Psi, and boundary state need to satisfy so-called gluing condition. So this is a uh, condition that any boundary states have to satisfy. And uh, then, so using such a boundary state, the boundary state, then, so basically we have, okay, so, CFT has chiral and anti-chiral part. So left or left left part and right part. So you can take a trace over the right part if you like. Then so you can define the reduced density matrix with respect to the left part or holomorphic part. And uh, any any boundary state can be expanded by the Ishibashi states like this. And each of our states are normalized in this way. But here, uh, okay, here, okay, I, I should emphasize that each of our state is not normalizable. So, so you need to, you need some regularization if you want to calculate some physical quantity. So anyway, the point is that left to right entanglement entropy is just a von Neumann entropy for this reduced density matrix. So basically, so in boundary safety, so you have left and right movers, but you take a trace over the right mover, then you end up with some reduced energy matrix for only for the left mover. Now, so then, so it's very easy to generalize this, this quantity to the pseudo, pseudo quantity. So now, so we want to uh, define an analog of left to right entanglement entropy. So you, you just replace one of psi uh, with another state. So now we have two boundary states and we take a trace of this guy over the right mover. Then we can similarly define the transition matrix for the left mover. So then the left to right entanglement, sorry, left to right shoot entropy is just a von Neumann entropy of this guy. And we did some quick calculation. Okay, so it's it's kind of straightforward to calculate a uh, should any sorry left right should entropy. But as I said uh, briefly, uh, since boundary state is not normalizable, so we need some regularization. So to regularize UV divergence, so we evolve the boundary state uh, along imaginary time by using Hamiltonian. So this epsilon is a small number. Just, this is just a regulator. And then if you calculate 
Okay, this is just a very simple okay calculation. So uh, I skipped all the detail. So then LLPE is now final form of the LLP uh, is given by this. So here you have UV divergent bar, but this is the uh, the finite part, which depends on the, this expansion. So it states parameters and also modular S matrices. So this is a uh, very general result. And, uh, but uh, for get some insights, so get, let me focus on uh, simple uh, states. So let's take Psi to be the cardiac state. So cardiac state is a, uh, just a linear combination of Ishiba states. So this is a kind of physical boundary condition, yeah. Okay, obtained by Cardi uh, many years ago. And uh, let's take uh, the state phi to be uh, one of the Ishiba state, I. And then LLPE, it becomes uh, like this. It, it gets simplified. So then, so there is no dependence on, on the, uh, on the coefficient, this guy. Actually, actually, so in this case, so yeah, kind of surprisingly, so left, right should entropy does not depend on the choice of A, so Cardi states. So it is always gives a, the same result for any A. So, but anyway, so the point is that, uh, um, so you can calculate uh, the left, right should entropy for any state in this setup. So this is a new quantity we introduced. Okay, so maybe I'm uh, running out of time. So let me summarize my talk. Okay, so so in, in, in this talk, so I, I obtained some several analytic results for shoot entropy in topological and conformal series. Um, because in, in the previous literatures, okay, there are several uh, calculations, but uh, on, only a, a simple cases uh, have, have been studied so far. So, so we added several uh, yeah, more analytic results into the literature. And we also obtained a non-trivial relation between pseudo and interface entropy uh, in two dimensions. Uh, so we had half, half interval pseudo entropy and uh, half line interface entropy. Yeah, one interval should entropy and uh, half line interface entropy. So they are equal in CFT2. So this is a, a universal uh, non trivial relation. We also introduce left to right should entropy in boundary CFT and uh, obtains analytic result as well. So, but, uh, so, so we did may, many analytic calculations, but uh, so the, 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 uh, the followings are the future directions. So we didn't have nice applications so far. So, so one direction to go would be to find some up many application, more, more concrete example, so where we can apply uh, the pseudo entropy to constraints at UFD dynamics. So possibly the pseudo entropy satisfies an another types of inequalities uh, than entanglement entropy. And uh, also uh, this is my, yeah, personal, <laughs> yeah, personal um, comments, but okay. So I, I'm also interested in supersymmetric generalization of shared entropy. So in for the for the Rennie entropy, so in uh, some years ago, I introduced supersymmetric under yeah, version of Rennie entropy. So where I, uh, we can calculate Rennie entropy, uh, even for strongly interacting theory, thanks to supersymmetry. So we can perform analytic calculation even for uh, interacting field series. So if you would, uh, if you would be able to supersymmetrize pseudo entropy, then we would be also able to calculate uh, super pseudo entropy analytically for strong recoupled field series, and we would get more insights about the quantum entanglement in such cases. Okay, so thank you very much for your attention. So this is the end of my talk. Thank you. Thanks a lot for the nice talk. I think we can still take a few questions. I have one. Um, 
So thanks, thanks for the nice talk. That was very, uh, thank you. Very nice. So at some point you computed the the pseudo entropy and Trent Simons theory, and you got a lengthy formula. Uh, can you mm -hmm. go back to that? Ah, uh, sure. Uh, this one, one, this one. So where in this formula is? Um, so toward the end, you showed that in BCFT, you the pseudo entropy carries information on the states psi and phi. Mm -hmm. But here it doesn't look like it does. So it's, it only looks like um, N and K. So it, do, is this, right. because it looks completely universal, independent on phi and psi. So what's going on here? Okay, so, so this is because of our choice of psi and phi. Ah, okay. Right, yeah. So if you like, okay, so here I, for simplicity, I choose uh, states like this. But you can also uh, calculate uh, more complicated examples. For instance, okay, so you you can. Okay, I, I'm not good at writing. Okay, <laughs> but uh, okay. So th this is one crossing. So if uh, if you like, you you could have n, n crossing. Mm -hmm. Like this, and then the result. Uh, changes actually, so it 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 going to depends on say m. So if we have m crossing, okay, but so then is the j, result depends on j is a representation, isn't it? So it used to code the um, the Wilson loop. Oh. On fm. Sorry, I think I, I phased out. I didn't catch your answer. Um, Sorry, yeah, uh, connection is bad here. So, okay, could, could you repeat your question again? Uh, so J used to be a representation. I believe that somewhere before it was the Wilson line. Yeah, um, this is the end point of the Wilson line. Yes. Right, so that, that knows about a representation of the- Oh, representation, yes, yes. yes. Oh, okay. So, so you here, about here the there is no trace of the representation. Even if you had more loops, Mm -hmm. that's still not i mean you can do that for any representation i believe and here it looks like yes. it's completely independent of representation yeah uh, that's a good point okay let, let, let me check why it is independent of j um Oh, um, I think yeah. We we only take a, consider the fundamental representation, and this is anti fundamental. Okay. Yeah, that's why it it is it looks independent of J. So <laughs> the so so in general, you do expect a J dependence. Exactly. Yes. Okay. You can consider more yeah complicated representation if you like. But for simplicity, we only consider fundamental and anti-fundamental. Okay, thanks. Yes, thank you. Anyone else would like to ask a question? Um, yeah, I, I still have a question mm -hmm. about the... Um, about the last part on the left right and oh sure yeah because there you, you you somehow want to trace out the the right moving part right yes so I, when we're talking about the ishibashi state for example for the bosonic case like the bound is, is a kind of boundary state for the free bosons we know that it's like a gaussian state that is made of the yes. left right uh, operator mm -hmm. right and then somehow, yeah, I mean, in practice, uh, if we don't know um, what is the, the precise, uh, like what is the operator uh, formulation for the boundary state, how do we really do the trace for the, say, right moving operator? Uh, sorry, so you, your question is, yeah, so, if so, you don't example, know how to... Mm -hmm. Uh, we have this Carty state, right? It's, it's made of a boundary state. 
Uh, yeah, current state is made of, yes, uh, Ishibashi state, yes. Yeah, yeah, the Ishibashi state. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it seems to me now we want to trace out the right movers, say. Mm -hmm. but, but that somehow to me is uh, inside this uh, Ishibashi state. Mm -hmm. But you know that, uh, that it's not always true that we know how to like, that the explicit, we know the explicit form for the Rishibashi state. Um, yeah, actually, yeah, you, you, I don't think you need to know the explicit form of Ishibashi state. Uh -huh. So yeah, there is a, a um, some, okay, expression to write down Ishibashi state schematically. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that would be, enough for calculation. Okay. Yeah, so okay, Ishibashi states, okay, I, I don't remember the precise form, but so basically I can be written by some, yeah. So you, you pick up some basis. So I think this is some basis by primary and descendants. Mm -hmm. and schematically, you can write to each by state in this way. And in the calculation, um, I I only use this expression, or yeah, I don't even use this one, maybe. Yeah, right, yeah. So yeah, okay. I, okay, I, I only use this, the, the, this expression, yeah which I write about, wrote. So th this is enough. So I don't need to know what's the, how to construct this basis. Okay. I, okay. I only assume this form is valid. Okay, thanks. Yeah, now I recall, I recall that, thanks. Okay, okay, thanks. A any more question? I guess probably no one is going to ask. So let's thank uh, Tatsuma again. Thanks thank for the really much. nice talk. Thank you. I'm going to thank stop so the recording.